and welcome to Marsha's Mush and Stuff, where I do Dollar Tree hauls, DIYs, and so much more. Today, I am happy to be collaborating with my friend Zana from OK at Home DIY in an open invite that we did. And here's just a few of the crafts that she has made, theirs versus hers. Look at that price difference. She recreates using trash to treasure. Look at that cute fruit stand. So on to DIY number one. Just to let you know, you will find Zaina, who is the host for today's DIY Wood Challenge, and she will be linked in my description box, as well as myself and the playlist where you'll find tons of inspiration. So I do apologize on to DIY number one. This is the first DIY that we're gonna do using these two shadow boxes that did come from the Dollar Tree. So what I did was removed anything that was sticking up. That was being a little difficult. I was gonna use the, this little lamp to start with, but I didn't really think that through. And I don't make these prior. If you do, let me know in the comment box below, or do you kind of wing it like I do and see how it turns out. So I show you what mistakes I make and how I would have done it differently, but everything on this one turned out phenomenal. I am super impressed with how this one turned out. So you can't tell right now, but we are going to make a lantern. I have never made a lantern on my page. And for this DIY, we were to use something made of wood. So for me, I don't have scrap wood and I don't have use to power tools as I do live in a duplex. So I grabbed what supplies I had in my craft stash and went ahead and used that. So using the two shadow boxes, I took the paper off I actually sanded it off and I put some wood glue and hot glue combination of both and placed four wooden dowels in the corners of this shadow box so that's what we're doing right here and you'll see on the last one that I do go up the side of it just so everything is nice and flush against the edges so right there I go up it so it will attach nice and firmly so there it is and now it needs the top now some people and this is where I could have left it not glued on but I did go ahead and decide to glue it on I could have used that other light that I showed you in the beginning that I was going to secure to the inside However, you wouldn't be able to get to it without, well, the way I did it, you could have gotten to it. But turn it to its side and attach it, and now everything is nice and secured down. We had the wood craft glue, and now we're going to take these jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart, and we're going to cut them down to size, so you saw... I measured it there and then I'm going to use that one as my template and I'm going to make a total of eight because this is going to be my border and I'm super happy and Zaina has definitely inspired me from OK at Home DIY to do these little finishing touches. It really does make a huge difference in the way the DIY turns out. And I'm so happy that I did this because the end result, you'll see, it really makes it look just like a finished store-bought product. And again, just super happy with how this turned out. I thought of many different options, but I thought, you know what? So I'll come back to that. We're going to use one of these shower curtain rings and one Jenga block. So this is gonna be our top, and I measured that out, traced around that Jenga block so I would know where to glue it, and apply some hot glue to it, and attach that nice and firmly to the top. 
did not use any wood glue on that and then took the shower curtain ring and decided where it was going to touch and then applied hot glue to where it was going to touch on that Jenga block and used the silicone face mask applicator and there you go. And using this dark bronze Rust-Oleum hammered spray paint, took it outside and spray painted it. And wow, what a difference. So moving on to DIY number two, using these wood rectangular, rectangular style and two arrows, you could use these from the Dollar Tree, however they have holes. And that's what I'm showing you. These that came from the Dollar General did not have holes. And this again was the wood I had on hand. So I decided to score these. So that's why I'm tracing it out right there. I'm going to trace it so that I know exactly where to score it with my utility knife. And I'm going to remove everything, the jute, and anything I can keep for later projects. I'll definitely do that. Again, with the lantern, I want to be able to restyle that throughout the seasons and share that with you guys. So that's why I chose not to secure anything down that I do put into it. And I did change my mind on that several times. And you'll see me change it out through the season. And I'll definitely share that with you. But go ahead and score this. It was a little harder than I thought. Couldn't find my good utility knife. But it did break apart. And then use sandpaper or whatever you have on hand. A sanding sponge. Pop that little heart off. I was having a hard time getting these little embellishments off. But I scored that one as well, and it popped right off. That one did even better. And then using this sandpaper that you get from the tool bench section at the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and sanded everything. Front, back, sides, everything. And then I wiped it off with a damp cloth and then wiped it dry after that. So that's what I'm showing you here. It did take a lot of elbow grease. Let me tell you that this was not paper. It was literally painted on the wood wooden arrows. And these did come from the Dollar Tree back at Valentine's Day. I don't know if you remember me hauling these or not, but I did get them with a DIY in mind and this was perfect because we're gonna make a toolbox using these and those wood planks and two wooden dowels. So I have, if you include what I put in it, it costs a little more, but just with what I have in it right there is not even three dollars including the wooden dowel and these planks now this is something i would have done differently i would have built the box first and i turned the lighting down a little bit so that you could see it better and i didn't mean to turn those on the inside but it didn't matter in the end because i ended up painting over that anyway so, again, though, wish I had made the foundation like you would build a house. Wish I had done that first. Because you're going to see right here, I do make a mistake. And I go ahead and try to build it up so that that bottom piece will stay. However, if I had made the box first and then added these to the side... I think it would have turned out even better, even though I'm absolutely in love with this as well. I've wanted to make a toolbox for quite some time, and my friend Zana from OK at Home DIY knew that, and she has sent me some cutouts from her Cricut. She had even applied the transfer tape, and you'll see that later on in the video as well. 
So here's where I'm having problems getting that to attach. And so I decide the easiest thing for me to do at this point is take one side off. And again, using a combination of wood glue, it's the super, super glue wood glue from the tool bench section, again, at the Dollar Tree. But that's how I would have done it. I would have made that little box first and then attach your sides. But I only want it to remove one side, and again, I use the wood glue here and there, and then you'll see me go in between where the wood glue is not with hot glue, so that I have a quick hold, but a permanent hold as well. And so once that's nice and secure, and I add a little hot glue here and there, and let that dry for a little bit, and then came back with my wooden dowel. The first one I cut a little too small, so I remeasured and cut another. Honestly, the miter shears did not cut as well as I thought, so I was honestly way more happier using the dog nail trimmers, and you'll see that here in just a moment, I think. Yes, yeah, you will see that here in just a moment. So I initially applied hot glue to the ends of this wooden dowel to make the handle for my toolbox. It did end up popping off, so I did use wood glue and I let that dry overnight. And guys, it's not going anywhere. I'm really impressed with that super glue wood glue, not in the crafter square section at all. And again, this is where my friend Zaina inspired me to do those little details. And here's where I change over to the dog nail trimmers. You're going to need to cut four of these two size and get them all the same size and then buff them down on the bottoms. And that one I applied to the wooden dowel, but you'll see me change that up and I apply it to the little toolbox instead a line of hot glue and then stick that down and that just gives it a more finished look you don't see any of the gaps that see on that side would have definitely shown through so again this just gives it a more finished look and I love that and I've seen so many people do that especially Zaina and very inspired by her to do this. So using this decor art, it is a, also we're gonna use this chocolate brown to distress and do a dry brush technique. This is an off white, it's more of a cream color. It's not like stark white. And I like that, it just, to me, screams farmhouse. So I'm just going over that with two coats of paint and I make sure that is thoroughly dry and chalk paint does dry fast, but while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and style this lantern. So I had had these flowers and I just sat them on top and thought that was beautiful and decided to go all around with the votive holder and the candle inside since I didn't have a bigger candle and just made, I think it looks very country, very primitive, very even shabby chic. So now we're going to dry brush and that's what I'm showing you here, but I'm going to take my sanding sponge and go over where I did do the dry brush technique. I think it just blends it together better and it doesn't look like you did it on purpose. It looks like it was distressed by the weather on its own. And these are the Cricut cutouts that were sent to me from Zaina. I do apologize, my foot is in the picture, but I was so impressed with how easy this was. If I can only figure out how to get it onto the transfer tape, I will be set. And I hope that I got this lined up pretty well. I think that I did, and I'm happy with it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment box below. Which DIY was your favorite, one or two? 
Don't forget to check my description box for the playlist where you'll find other creators and more inspiration. And just a quick tip, I like to pull the transfer tape from the corner and kind of pull it at an angle so that the letters stay on and you can see that there. So this is my first time ever doing this, but I found that was the best technique to use and was quite impressed. None of the letters peeled up and look at that. It looks like it came that way. I'm going to use the greenery bouquet. I love these flowers. And I'm just going to bend that stem and place them in this box. That way, again, I can change it out throughout the season. I thought about flower market would be cute too. But again, because I don't exactly know how to do that. But there is the end result. But I think farmer's market goes well with my home decor. And again, let me know your thoughts and which one you like the best. And again, don't forget to check out the description box. Go over to Zaina at OK at Home DIY. Let her know that I sent you over. And until the next time, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give a thumbs up and ring that bell for notifications. And until the next time, I will see you then, my friends. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Thanks for watching.